Hello and welcome to this new series on pandas. This entire series is based around pandas and in Python for those who don't have a lot of coding experience with Python. I presume almost no knowledge, but I do presume that you have a basic understanding of things like strings, numerical numbers, like integers and floats, and a general idea about how objects work. If you, if you know those basics about Python, you'll be fine with this series. This entire series is based around a new textbook that I am writing, and it's on pandas, essentially it teaches you pandas from the ground up, from how to install it, what it's good for, how to use it, and to the basic methods to working with um, finding data in a data frame, organizing data, cleaning data, advanced searching, filtering, grouping, and even some plotting and some introduction to time series data. If you don't know about any of these things, I encourage you to check out this textbook. This series of videos is actually a result of a poll that I put out in the channel and I asked if people would be interested in pandas videos and 85% of the people polled said that they would. So now I'm doing it along with this textbook which is available at pandas.pythonhumanities.com and go ahead and like and subscribe down below if you're already interested in this series or this channel and do consider supporting it via Patreon. I put all my content out for free and I don't ask for... Um, uh, I don't really try to generate income off of it, I just use the income to keep the channel alive and paying for the server space. So what I want to do throughout these videos is kind of go through and these videos will be embedded in the textbook so that you have a one-stop shop for everything about pandas if you don't have any prior knowledge about it. So the big first question is, what is pandas? Why have I heard about pandas? Why is it useful? And the answer is that a good way to think about pandas is as something that you're probably already familiar with, which is Excel. Now, in my personal opinion, Excel is a very, very useful piece of software. It does something that's very good. It visualizes a whole bunch of what we call tabular data. It's very handy for people who don't know how to code or maybe even uh, engage in some SQL, um, so databasing. It's a great tool for those who just need to look at tabular data and do some basic things with it. Excel, however, has a few very clear limitations. First, it doesn't handle big data very well, meaning once you get to around 10,000 rows, which is considered a fairly small data set if you're working in Python, it starts to break a little bit and become very, very slow. On top of that, it's difficult to query it, meaning it's difficult to structure questions about your tabular data. While it's very good at displaying it, and it's pretty good at actually using the, uh, plotting that data, kind of with all these built-in tools up here in the, uh, the different uh, ribbons that we have up here. It is very limited in being able to structure robust queries. And you're going to see that really kind of play out throughout this whole series. So Pandas is kind of a Python library that is designed to handle tabular data like this. And the reason why it's useful is because it can work with data that comes from Excel files. So um, XLSX, it can work with data that comes in the form of CSV files, so comma separated value files, which is a very common uh, data form. And this is what this file is right here. This is actually a CSV file on the Titanic data set, which we're going to be using throughout this uh, entire Jupyter book. And it also can work with JSON data. It can work with TS, uh, uh, C, uh, TSV files, so tab-separated values. It can work with a whole bunch of different kinds of data really easily, and in just a few lines of code, you can not only structure and clean your data, you can start to interrogate your data. And that's why Pandas really kind of excels over Excel, no pun intended. It's lighter, meaning it's less computationally expensive. It can work with large data sets. It's going to have some limitations around a million rows, um, but there's other libraries out there that you would use for in these situations. And it's also really good at structuring robust questions. It can do a lot of the things that SQL can do, which is a databasing language, but it can do it in Python, which means that you, if you're using Python for your main workflow, you can introduce smoothly tabular data and work with it. So that's really the big leveraging power that Pandas has over um, Excel or SQL, is that you can use it in your workflow, it's lightweight, and you can do a lot of robust things with it. And so uh, one of the things that you really need to understand if you're going to be working with pandas is this idea of a data frame. A data frame is just a fancy way of describing um, kind of that table itself. Think of it as the entire Excel spreadsheet. That's a, that's a data frame, for lack of a better word. It's all of the data that you have in there. And within a data frame, as we're going to see in the next video, you've got several different columns and several different rows in which your data is structured just like you would expect in an Excel file. However, what you can do with the data frame in Python is a lot more powerful. You can query it, you can restructure it, you can 
and clean it. You can do a lot of advanced things that either you can't do in Excel or require a lot of code to do in Excel or is very slow to do in Excel. So that's why you would want to use pandas over something like Excel or SQL is it's fairly easy to implement within a Python framework or within a py Python pipeline. So pandas is also going to be very useful because um, a lot of data scientists or people who just work with data in general use it and they expect you to know it. It is a very robust library that's used by many in, the, in different fields from data science to the sciences to maths to even the humanities increasingly. So becoming familiar with pandas early on will help you understand other people's code and it'll make your code look a lot better. Now there's other ways that you can work with CSV data uh, in Python. You can use the, the built-in library CSV. However, this is very limiting because it doesn't let you actually query your data, manipulate your data, or really analyze it in any significant way. It just lets you load in CSV data. Pandas does the exact same thing, but allows for you to leverage all those extra powerful tools along with it. On top of that, there are other libraries out there, such as XLRD, that allow you to load in Excel files. That's useful, but again, these libraries only let you get the data into Python. They don't really handle the querying of that data the way Pandas does. And that's what we're going to really kind of explore throughout this entire textbook on Pandas is the power of Pandas, how and why and when you should be using it in your workflow. And I came to Pandas late in my programming experience because I always viewed it as a little daunting. A lot of the tutorials out there were a little over my head when I first started out many years ago. Oh, this is designed to make pandas accessible. So if you don't have a lot of experience with coding, you will be finding this tutorial series a little bit more useful, a little bit easier to understand than some of the other ones that are out there. And again, I'm presuming no knowledge about pandas. Now, throughout this entire textbook, you're going to see things like this. You're going to see a uh, exclamation mark followed by some kind of a command. This is in a Jupyter notebook, which I've got a few different videos on on this channel. What that means is that one of these cells, which is where my code is stored, I can call in a terminal command like a, that you would do in command prompt. And the exclamation mark says that I want to run this as a, a terminal command or a line command. So what this is saying is to run pip install pandas. If you are not using a Jupyter notebook or you're not comfortable with that, you can do this in your command prompt if you're on Windows or any kind of terminal that you have, whether you're on Linux or Mac, and just do pip install pandas. It's a fairly straightforward install. There's not a lot of hiccups that can happen here. Uh, I'm going to be using, as you can tell, uh, I'm going to be using 1.15 throughout this textbook. I am not able to update videos on YouTube. I am, however, able to update the actual notebooks on GitHub, and I'm also able to update the textbook. So if something that's happening here is breaking, check out the textbook because it's been updated to comply with the latest version of Pandas. So that's how you install Pandas. Once you have Pandas installed, you import it like any other library. You're going to do import Pandas, and this is key here, import Pandas as PD. This is the Pythonic or kind of the standard way of importing Pandas. Every single uh, question that you look for an answer for online, such as Stack Overflow or GitHub, every single person is going to be importing Pandas as PD. And if somebody is trying to help you solve your code, they're going to expect you, if you're using pandas, to import it as PD. What does this mean? It means that as you are coding, you don't have to write pandas dot something, uh, pandas dot data frame. You write PD dot data frame, which we're going to see in the next video. So again, if you've finished this video now, you should have a good sense of what pandas is. Um, generally, what it's used for generally, which is tabular data, and a good understanding of how to basically install it and import it correctly. If you have all that, then I think you're good to move on to the next video. Um, I'm designing these videos to go around this Jupyter, uh, this Jupyter book, this textbook on pandas. And so each of these videos are going to be embedded when complete at the bottom of the page. So check it out there as well. If you get stuck, you can kind of watch the video inside the, the textbook. 
I am also, when this is all done, going to be bringing all these videos together in one long 60 or 120 minute long video so that you can kind of just sit back and watch all these videos as one continuous stream as opposed to having to go through a playlist. That's going to be it for this video though. In the next video, we're going to start tackling the basics of pandas. We're going to cover all of these different things. We're going to cover how to create a data frame, how to display it, how to save it, how to create one from a CSV file, a JSON file. If you don't know what either of those are, you're going to know a lot more about them by the end of the next video. And then we're going to start tackling things like how to add columns to a data frame, how to grab a specific column, how to convert a column to a list, and how to grab a specific row. So basically, by the end of the next video, which is going to be a little bit longer, you're going to have all the basics down. So you can start kind of working with pandas right out of the gate. That's going to be it for this video, though. If you've liked it, please do like and subscribe down below.